Welcome to PP18, the ITU Plenipotentiary Conference here in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, where I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today by Paula Ingabire, who is the Minister for ICT and Innovation for the Republic of Rwanda. Minister, welcome to the studio. Thank you for having me here. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you, there is currently considerable attention being placed on harnessing the power of uh, in information and communication technologies or ICTs as an enabler for good, uh, for the development of the benefit of people, families, communities and nations. What's your perspective on this? Uh, to start with, I think um, I'm even very impressed that we've moved away from the notion of thinking of ICT as a standalone industry. Uh, and we're now uh, over and over thinking about ICT one as an enabler uh, to the different uh, clusters or segments of the economy. But also I look at it as an integrator. And so uh, when I start with the notion of being an enabler, it's that it isolates some of those barriers uh, that, that in a way isolate uh, you know, um, the different facets of the society. Um, I did mention that I also view ICT as, in, as an integrator, and, and, and that's correct because um, if you look at the whole drive around um, bridging the digital divide um, as, as a crucial aspect of how eco-access really fosters, fosters innovation and entrepreneurship, you start to see how uh, the different technology tools that we put in the hands of the people are able to integrate the different elements of their lives. And so uh, from, as, a, as a personal perspective, I look at it as an enabler and as an integrator. Now, this is this is the first plenipotentiary conference for ITU yes. since the world agreed on the Sustainable Development Goals, of which there are quite a few, but I wanted to ask you, perhaps you could provide some examples of how ICT are helping to drive sustainable development in Rwanda. I want to start off uh, with um, some time in 2016, right at the time when the, we were evaluating you know, how much has been achieved in terms of the N M MDGs. Uh, and Rwanda had done considerably well in that space. And at that point, Rwanda uh, was uh, selected as a headquarter that would spearhead implementation of sustainable development goals. Um, that's not a task that comes in very easy. But then what it has gotten us doing as a government, but collectively with the private sector, is to think of innovative ways uh, through which we can really achieve uh, the sustainable development goals. I'll just pick out a few um, cases just to give you an idea. When we look at healthcare, um, some of the things that we've done and something that the government of Rwanda is keen on is how do we leverage these emerging technologies uh, that are really uh, driving social economic development across the globe to really transform the way we do things uh, back home. Um, I'm sure you've seen it uh, recently even in the news where we've been using drones as a, uh, as a way of delivering blood uh, to the different hospitals and healthcare centers across the country. And we've seen um, a lot of improvement in terms of healthcare delivery, thanks to drones, mainly uh, around uh, the fact that you're able to save lives because you're able to get blood in a much faster uh, way. We, it usually took us about three hours to deliver blood and now it's come down uh, to 26 minutes and so you're able to save many lives. But also, uh, you've also we've been able to control wastage of blood uh, by over 80% uh, in terms of how much blood waste was happening due to transportation and, um, and storage uh, related elements. And so that has been one area. And when we go to education, um, the government has placed uh, a lot of emphasis in terms of how do we uh, increase digital literacy at all uh, at different age groups. And, one of the things that we did uh, a few years ago was really how do we uh, place laptops in the hands of children and, and we've been part of this global one laptop per child initiative where you know at a very tender age when you place such devices in there in the kids hands it almost you know triggers high levels of creativity that you wouldn't see ordinarily at you know uh, uh, older age groups and so that's one area but also uh, i think even going forward what we're starting to see because uh, our vision of becoming a knowledge-based economy uh, and, and really driving innovation within the economy one of the areas that we're focusing on is how do we build talent, because how do we build uh, and increase scientific research and innovation? 
and we have been able to attract a number of partners who really are coming into that space. We have the Africa Institute for Mathematical Sciences that is really focused uh, on uh, scientific research in the areas of mathematics. You also have uh, Carnegie Mellon that really has a strong focus on how to build developer skills. Recently, we signed an agreement with Andela that has that is going to train over 500 uh, developers uh, within Rwanda, and the, really the emphasis on talent development is mainly aligned with the different areas where Rwanda wants to lead in terms of innovation, and the critical skills that are required to drive those areas are really developer skills, and and so that has been a lot of the emphasis, and maybe I could touch briefly on two other ele one element which is bringing services closer to people uh, to improve their lives. And through that, we've been able to roll out uh, a platform called eRembo. It really provides all services to citizens online. But beyond providing services, cutting the trips, uh, the, the number of trips that a citizen has to make to get a service from government, it has also helped in terms of contributing towards the welfare of citizens because one of the things we do in terms of increasing access to citizens is the agency network that happens in the different communities. So it's not strictly getting services from really a, speci you know, a physical space and a physical government office, but really empower empowering citizens to support each other in driving digital literacy, but also in accessing services. So those are a number of examples in areas where we are trying to um, uh, to really promote uh, the, the, the adoption of ICT in driving sustainable development goals. And maybe I should mention one last element, which is really around smart cities. We are part of the Smart Africa uh, initiative. We're part of the member states and each member state has a flagship area they're leading on. Rwanda is leading on smart cities. Uh, but we're not just looking at the key uh, cities. We're also looking at the multiple you know, secondary cities across the country. But in really tackling issues that are very central and critical to um, you know, urban city development, we are actually addressing challenges that are fundamental to the citizens that are living within those cities. It's wonderful, it's all very laudable projects and uh, and initiatives, and you're very much at the cutting edge there, obviously, of technology, and uh, a great example for uh, all nations around the world. I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, the digital divide. I know that you mentioned it there with uh, trying to address some of these elements, but uh, about half the world's population is now connected to the internet, the other half isn't. Just really wanted to find out what specifically is Rwanda doing to get everyone connected? So for a start as a country, a lot of focus was put in terms of access. Um, how do we provide access, equitable access across uh, you know, the different districts within, within the country? Uh, and that has been achieved. And, and really, we've had a good relationship with the different operators who have really invested uh, heavily into you know, rolling out high broadband, high speed uh, broadband infrastructure across the country. But we are at a point where now the issues that we are tackling are to do with affordability, because that's the only way you're able to bridge that digital divide and really increase your you know, internet penetration, voice penetration across. And a number of interventions are in place, of course, through engaging uh, the different operators. So in terms of op um, affordability, we're looking at two, uh, I could say, s segments. One is affordability of services, the other one is affordability of devices. Uh, and I think there's been made major progress when it comes to affordability of services where we're seeing operators increasingly coming up with innovative uh, packs that, that are time-based, uh, that really allow for the citizen and the user to maximize data usage, uh, but also to be affordable to them. Uh, but once you do that, you already have them hooked. And so they, they, they're constantly looking for these services because they understand the value uh, that it brings to them. In terms of devices, which is really crucial, again, one of the things that we've been doing is to engage operators to say, can you come up with, you know, uh, incentivized devices so that you're able to put devices in the hands of the citizens and, and make them less expensive, that makes it easy for them to purchase these uh, devices. And maybe if you need to recoup that investment, that can be built into the services without making them necessarily expensive. And so uh, affordability is one thing that we, uh, there's, there's definitely room for improvement. There's definitely room for being more creative on how we can increase affordability because that's the only way we can increase, um, uh, the, uh, you know, how, how much uh, um, 
we, we bridge in terms of the digital divide. The other element is on literacy, digital literacy. It's one thing to have devices and services, but it's the other thing to empower uh, citizens to be able to actually use and make use and maximize you know, these devices and services that they now have access to. Um, and so we're working very closely with different uh, private players to see what are some of the creative ways we can you know, drive uh, digital literacy across the Rwandan population. Uh, besides just trainings, what are some of the other ways that we can do this? And so those are the two areas that we are focused on to bridge the digital divide, which is affordability and digital literacy. Yeah, we covered a lot of ground here, but I just yeah. wanted to ask you finally, what's your message here to participants at ITU uh, PP18 and to our wider audience as well? My key message, and, and this is something that as Rwanda we're very passionate about, um, as, as, uh, just like any other across the, con the African continent, we have a number of countries that are really working so hard to become innovation hubs. Uh, but I think this drive is really inspired by the fact that we want to move away from being consumers to becoming creators of these uh, innovations, of these uh, technologies and solutions. And so um, ITU provides a good platform for these kind of um, partnerships, whether it's multilateral partnerships or bilateral partnerships. But I think increasingly we need to put a strong emphasis on how we support each other to become creators uh, of these innovations so that we can have equitable uh, uh, development when it comes to the sustainable development goals. Minister, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you.